Dear friends in Christ, this indeed is a very joyful day uh, for our diocese and certainly for the entire church. And as we gather together to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, we express profound gratitude to the Lord our God for these, our candidates, Deacons Nicholas, Edward, Sean, and Will, who will soon be ordained our newest priests. Again, heartfelt thanks to their dear parents and family members for the support and love with which you have extended to them throughout their lives and even today. And once again, thank you to the seminary formators who have assisted me in the training of these candidates. On this joyful day, we also have to acknowledge that this has been a challenging time in the life of our church as we continue to face some difficult issues due to the fact that some of her leaders and members of the clergy have violated the sacred trust given to them. And throughout this time of crisis this past year, I visited our seminaries and our parishes and conducted listening sessions. And there were two constant themes that were repeated by the faithful. And the first theme was this. Bishop, the only way that we can remain strong and hopeful is if we remember that this is the Lord's church. At this time of year in our diocese and in other dioceses, some priests are transferred, which I always say is a lesson in humility and reality. I think of my own transfers throughout the priesthood, and it seemed that through all of them, I heard a consistent statement, which maybe my brother priest would be able to say the same. Parishioners would come and say, Father, we're so sorry that you're leaving. And in the very same sentence, and who's taking your place? <laughs> Actually, when you think about it, that is a great act of faith. Recognizing that no parish, no diocese, depends on one certain priest or bishop. The care of a parish, the care of a diocese, is only entrusted to us for a privileged season, but it's always the Lord's. The one who speaks to you today, dear candidates, through the prophet Jeremiah, and says, have no fear, I am with you to deliver you, and promises that nothing will destroy his church and his healing ministry will continue. And so the Lord, in his goodness today, gives us a sign that his promises are true. Because in just a few moments, with the imposition of hands and the prayer of ordination, Deacons Nicholas, Edouard, and Sean, and Will will be forever configured to the very person of Jesus Christ. And they will be sent forth in his holy name to be instruments of the Lord's healing love, divine mercy, and saving power. And the church today, in this rite of ordination, makes it very clear what she expects of her priests. They are to be worthy co-workers with the bishop, they are to proclaim the truth and the joy of the gospel. They are to be faithful stewards of sacred mysteries so that God's holy people are renewed through the waters of baptism and nourished with the gift of the Holy Eucharist so that sinners are reconciled and the sick are raised up. And how beautiful it is that tomorrow you'll be celebrating Masses in your parish on Pentecost. That this prayer of ordination also calls forth 
the Holy Spirit to make you holy. That brings us to the second theme I heard as I traveled this past year to our seminaries and parishes and conducted listening sessions. Over and over again, people would say to me, Bishop, the only thing that will transform our church with God's grace is holiness. I can assure you, dear friends in Christ, that these men, soon to be ordained priests, understand that and believe it to be true. That is why throughout their seminary formation, they made their, in their intimate relationship with the Lord and their spiritual lives their highest priorities. Understanding the words of Jesus, remain in my love. And with his grace, they will continue to grow in holiness as priests, as they remain true to the celibate state, and so serve God with an undivided and generous priestly heart, as they remain faithful to their promises of respect and obedience, revealing their trust in God's holy will, as they pray fervently including the Liturgy of the Hours, the Universal Prayer of the Church, and as they imitate the sacrificial, the selfless love of Jesus in their outreach to the poor and the needy and the most vulnerable in response to the Lord's mandate, love one another as I love you. It is a concern of mine sometimes at an ordination ceremony that as the candidates hear all that the Lord and his church and their bishop expects of them, they might get a bit overwhelmed. So maybe this vocation story will help you. It's a vocation story of the first native of North Carolina to be ordained a priest, Father Thomas Price. And as he was making his way to the seminary on a ship, it encountered a very fierce storm, very rough waters, so much so that he was thrown overboard into those deep waters, barely able to keep his head above the water, and throughout the whole time calling out the name of Jesus to save him. He was given a beautiful vision of Our Lady with a gentle smile and her arms stretching out, actually pointing to a plank, which actually became the instrument that saved his life. He went on to be a holy priest filled with missionary zeal. In fact, his cause for beatification and canonization has been open. Deacons Nicholas and Edouard and Sean and Will, soon you will be sent forth as the Lord's priests. And just like his disciples, you may face some challenges and stormy waters, but you will never be overwhelmed if it is the holy name of Jesus that you call upon to save you, the one who in a very special way today gives you his mother as your mother and assures you that her arms are outstretched to hold you and carry you and protect you. We pray that through her powerful intercession and with the graces of her son, you will go forth today always remembering that this is the Lord's church and nothing will destroy it. That you will grow, go forth and each and every day grow in holiness so that you will be effective instruments of his healing love 
and divine mercy and saving power, the one who is our great high priest and who lives and reigns forever and ever.